How's it going, fellow Detroit Red Wings fans? With the upcoming season a mere month and a half away, we are starting to see the lines and teams come together. And with that, we are starting to see prospects, players, that may finally have an opportunity to show off what they can do. So we're gonna take a look at the top five players and prospects who could experience a breakout season. Without further ado, let's start off with number five. We have a big, powerful center standing at six feet, six inches, 229 pounds, Michael Rasmussen is a former first round pick from the 2017 NHL entry draft, who dominated the junior leagues after being drafted, he actually averaged over 2 points per game in the playoffs, enough to force their hand to put him in the NHL the next season. After that, it's been a little bit rough. He was streaky in the NHL, putting up 18 points in 62 games in his rookie season. Then going to the AHL, he dealt with injury, but still put up 22 points in 35 games. Then last season, he split time between the NHL, the AHL, and the ICEHL, where he posted good numbers, but most importantly, proved he could be an asset on the NHL roster. So next season is big for him. He has been working on his skating, putting on muscle. He looks set to add solid depth scoring while being a force on the power play, whether net front or setting up plays from behind the net. I expect Rasmussen to put 40 to 50 points up next season, majority being power play points and to possibly compete for the second line center spot, especially if one of our centers gets injured. It's a possibility we can see that first round potential next season. Speaking of first round picks, at number four is our first round selection from the 2020 NHL Draft, Lucas Raymond. Last season, Raymond played in the SHL where he put up good numbers. It wasn't dominating, especially considering William Uckland, a year younger than him, taking seventh overall, put up more points than Raymond did. After Raymond finished up his season, he signed an entry-level contract with the Red Wings to presumably come across the pond and either play with the Grand Rapids Griffins or in Detroit, depending on how well he does in the preseason. So you may be asking, why would he come over to play, and more importantly, why would he be set to break out? Well, you see, Raymond didn't get deployed to where he could show how good his skills actually are. Raymond averaged a meager 14 minutes and 19 seconds a night. Just to make this clear, Uckland averaged 15 minutes and 29 seconds, so for every game, Uckland had more time to produce. And aside from him and Sider, who had a historic season, Raymond was a top U20 scoring in the SHL last season. So when he goes to play in the AHL next season, which is similar compete level to the SHL, probably a little bit better, Raymond will be playing on the top line and should average more closely to 20 minutes a night. There's a very good chance he dominates the AHL if he can get used to the North American ice and the more aggressive style of play, and maybe even make his way to the NHL. But expect Raymond to be around a point per game in the AHL if they send him to Grand Rapids to develop. So welcome to the top three. So to kick us off at number three, we have a new face to the organization, Jacob Vrana. Rano was a part of the trade with the Washington Capitals earlier this season that sent Mantha to the Washington Capitals in return for Vrana, Panic, a first round pick, and a second round pick. Now due to the shortened season, it was a small sample size, but Vrana went point per game, including a four goal game against the Dallas Stars. Vrana has been playing at a good pace since entering the league. However, due to the Capitals having very good high-end offensive forwards, in their lineup, like Alex Ovechkin, TJ Oshie, Nicholas Backstrom, Tom Wilson, Evgeny Kuznetsov, and more, Vrana was never given a real opportunity to be a top-line player. The increase in playing time should give him an opportunity to be around a point per game, especially using that check connection with Philip Sedina on the other wing and Larkin at center. If Vrana plays a full 82-game schedule, expect him to be around a point per game and possibly hit the 30-goal mark. So before we go to number one and two, I want to give some honorable mentions to Joe Valeno and William Wallander. Valeno has been playing in three different leagues the last three seasons, the NHL, the SHL, and the AHL, and finally made his NHL debut and getting his first NHL goal. It seems like the pieces are finally there and starting to come together. He is almost a guarantee to play in the NHL at some point next season. Wallander may be a bit of a surprise, but he will be developing with Rogla in their club the same team that housed Moritz Sider last season. With Wallander's skill, there's a possibility he breaks out or at least has a good season of developing. So on to number two. Speaking of Rogla, this player had a career year with them. 
He won SHL Defenseman of the Year in the SHL, Best Defenseman at the World Championships. We are talking about everyone's favorite prospect, Moritz Seider. Seider lit up the SHL, leading U20 scoring as a defenseman. Seider arguably had the skill to make the NHL last year, possibly even two seasons ago, mainly because of how weak our defense was. Regardless, Seider has found his offense. But the great thing, and I have said this before, he is even better defending. Whether it's breaking up the rushes, laying the body, or getting the play in the other direction, he just plays really well no matter where he is on the ice. It will be his rookie season, expect him to put up around 40-ish points and have one of the best plus minuses on the team. And he is definitely an early candidate for the Calder Trophy for next season. For our final player at number one, we have a player who is on the NHL roster. He was drafted a couple seasons ago and it made big news when he was selected because he was not supposed to go that far in the draft. He has been struggling a little bit, but we are talking about the Czech, Philip Zadina. Zadina put up okay points the last couple of seasons. He definitely improved his plus minus and it seems like he was definitely focusing on his defensive side of the game and possibly becoming more confident at the NHL level. But this next season looks set for him to finally break out and put up lots of goals. He made a promise to any NHL team that passed over him in the draft that he will fill their nets. And it looks like this will finally be the season that we can see that Philip Zadina come out and do that. He will most likely be playing on the top line with Larkin, etc. And either Bertuzzi or Vrana on the other wing. It should give him the right players to be able to put him in the right position to put up points and score goals. Expect him to be around 70 points, 60 points next season and put up at least 25 to 30 goals, if not more. Let us know what you think of this list. Who do you think is going to break out, whether it's a Detroit Red Wings prospect or player? We want to know. Let us know down below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. That way we make more content that you like. And lastly, don't be afraid to subscribe. That way you get notified when we upload a video. Until next time, Lights on the Red Light District.